Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to look at the topic uh, metals and we're going to do the introduction bit of extraction of metals. So basically we are going to be focusing on uh, some of the things that happen before extraction occurs. So some metals usually occur naturally in a free and combined state while others are usually found combined with other elements. The ones that are usually found um, free are some of like gold, silver, platinum, while the ones that are combined usually occur in ores. So ores are the metal bearing rocks. For example, some of the ores are oxides, uh, sulfides, uh, carbonate, chlorides. This is the ones that now occur in combined state and some of this these are some of the ways they occur in uncombined state so an ore is a mineral deposit with a reasonable composition of a desired material so we're going to be talking about ores a lot especially when we start on the extraction of different metals and it is a requirement for you to remember the major ores of different metals because that is where most that is the ore that is usually most used for extraction. So methods of extraction usually depend of them on the metal in the reactivity series. So the main methods are the electrolytic method. So when you look at where metals are on the reactivity series, you give them different ways of extracting them. So one of the methods is electrolytic method. So let's see which are some of the metals that are extracted using this method. So it's, this method is used for metals high up in the reactivity series, like sodium and potassium, calcium and magnesium, and aluminium. So you notice in this topic, we are going to look at sodium and aluminium. And these two metals are going to use our electrolytic method. This is because they are highly reactive. You cannot reduce them because they are very high in the reactivity series. These metals usually occur in very stable ores. So we, we want to, to be able to, to extract them, but you cannot use the redu reduction method because of the reduction compo or compounds used are not able to reduce them because of high, how high re highly reactive they are. The second method is a reduction method. It's usually used, used for less reactive metals like iron, zinc, and copper, and also I'll throw in lead inside there. Uh, it is achieved using carbon uh, in form of coke. So you notice mostly some of the raw materials we'll be using is coke and the function of coke is to provide carbon that is used for reducing and also coke helps in formation of carbon 2 oxide when it is heated in insufficient air. And then also hydrogen also can be used in some cases to reduce uh, this uh, ores. So oxidation is also used followed by reduction. So what are some of the steps that the ores undergo before extraction? So minerals are usually mined with several impurities which lower the concentration of the metal per given mass. So you notice, for example, when you're extracting gold, the amount of mud that is in the ore is so high, the amount of gold is less. So you see it's it's, it's um, lowering the concentration of the metal. So we need to remove those extra things so that the ore is first concentrated before the actual extraction. Uh, so concentration is possible due to the difference in properties between the mineral compounds and the earthly materials. This could be mud, it can be stones. So methods of ore concentration, we have the physical method so we have the optical sorting. This is used to separate ores that have different colors that can be detected in the naked eye. It involves hard picking of the desired particles. So it is usually used for minerals containing transitional elements such as chromium. 
So you see like chromium, if you put chromium in uh, soil or uh, sad particles, it's, it has a different shine, which helps even the people who are extracting, they can be able to tell the difference. So one of the ways to, to concentrate the ore is to remove those earthly materials by just picking the ore directly from the earthly materials. So another way is hydraulic washing. It's also called sink and float uh, separation. So it utilizes the difference in the densities between minerals and the unwanted materials. So the ore is washed, as you can see from the diagram. It is washed with a stream of water. So the denser particles will sink to the bottom of the washing container and then can be collected. You can see how from each compartment, the denser particles are left behind. And then at the end of the day, we collect um, uh, the mineral or the ore, which is much, much concentrated after removing those other things. Examples of ores of tin, uh, it's usually used uh, in extraction of tin and lead. Another method is magnetic separation, which is which use is used when either one of the ores or the earthly materials are magnetic in nature. So what happens? The you can see the magnet. This is a very strong magnet. This one, the magnetic roller. So a magnet is used to attract the magnetic component, leaving the non-magnetic components behind. So you can see the components that are magnetic are attracted, the other ones that are not magnetic are like separated in the process. Examples of ores that can be uh, separated or concentrated in this method is iron, like magnetite, which is the iron 3 oxide, iron 4 oxide, and chromate, which are magnetic. Another way of concentrating is electrostatic uh, separation. So it is used to separate particles which have different electric charges. So the particles are subjected to an electric field, as you can see in the setter. So the oppositely charged particles flow, uh, follow different paths and can be separated. You can see they are poor conductors and better conductors. They have different paths. They move in different directions. And then finally, we have froth flotation. This is very common, especially in our uh, papers. It's a very common tested question. It's mainly used for sulfide ores. So it takes two advantages of two properties. So oil um, is used for this process. So oil can wet the surfaces of the ores and the oil floats on water. So the fact that oil behaves in this manner helps in being used in this process. So the process, the ore is ground into a fine powder to increase surface area for the upcoming reaction. And then it is mixed with water and a suitable oil detergent or vegetable oil. And then after it is mixed, it's then agitated. You can see the agitator at the bottom by blowing compressed air through it. And then so this causes small bubbles or uh, attached to the oil or particles which are then boiled up and carried to the surface where they float. So the oil sort of like forms part, uh, bubbles with the oil and then it floats on the top. So a froth ditch in minerals is formed at the top where the impurities usually sink at the bottom because the impurities don't uh, mix with the oil. So the froth is skimmed off and dried and the fruit flotation is used for copper, lead, and zinc because you notice you use this in our, our study uh, for extraction. And finally, we have chemical concentration. So chemical concentration involves the use of chemical reactions to concentrate the ore. So example, when we talk about bauxite, the main aluminium ore is chemically concentrated by a process known bias process. So you look at that bias process later on and see how we concentrate it. 
and this takes advantage of the apoteric nature of aluminium oxide which thus can react with both acids and bases. So the chemical concentration can be done by leaching and it involves reacting the ore with a compound such as sodium cyanide. So the cyanide ions they form complexes with the metal and the complex ions form water soluble and can be separated by filtration leaving the unwanted materials in the residue. So we will see how this bias process occurs when we, come, we get to extraction of aluminium. So that's it for the introduction bit of extraction. I hope you have been able to see the different ways of concentrating oils and also the different ways of extracting different methods in regards to where they are on the reactivity series. So see you in the next lesson as we now go to details of the extraction of each element.